We are going to do cathode ray oscilloscope. In cathode ray oscilloscope, um, I would like to tell you two formulas before we start, okay? So the first thing you guys need to understand is that um, number one, if you want to find the time period, you have to multiply time base setting by the length of signal all right and then if you want to find voltage you have to multiply y gain setting with amplitude so that's what you should be doing now So keeping that in mind, these two formulas are highly important. And with that, let's write it somewhere. I was supposed to write it. Okay, let's write it here. Doesn't matter. Yeah. So you guys remember this. Anyway. Okay, that's not even right. So write somewhere, somewhere. Okay, never mind. Let's write this here. Okay. So for for this, you only need to know these formulas. Uh, they will help you figure out any question they tell you to. So first of all, it says calculate the frequency of sound. Speed is given and the wavelength is given. So V is equal to F lambda. And then obviously speed is 330. Frequency is F. That is 1.8. 1 upon 8. 3.18. So we're going to get something like 330 divided by 0 0.018. Which is 0 0.18. which is basically frequency comes out to be 1833 hertz okay so we're going to write it to two significant figures or you can write 1830 as well that would be correct as well but 1833 is not correct anyway then it says determine this time based setting in seconds per centimeter of the CRO now just keep in mind you need to first change it to time period so time period 1 upon 1800 So that's going to be 1 divided by 1800. How do I know this? Because frequency is 1 upon time period, that's like that. So the time period right now is 0 0.0006 uh, seconds. Now if you look at the wave, you might realize that the wave is displayed such a way that one wave completes like one box, two box, three, four, five. There are one, two, three, four, and five boxes. So that's basically one length of a wave is given as five centimeters. So now we're going to use this formula, the first one, right? Time period equals to time base setting multiplied by the length. So we want to find time base setting. The time period is this one. And the length was 5 centimeters, so you divide that. So it means the time base setting 0 0.0006, it was 5, 5, right? I think. Divided by 5, so that's going to be 0 0.00011 seconds per centimeter. Is that clear everyone? Any questions, please let me know. Okay then, very nice. So 
سوئے لائبہ سہان عمر ختیجہ سکویز مہم امن اماد ایویتنگ سکلیر ناو ان دا نیکسٹ کوشچن وچ از ایون بیٹر ایٹ سیز دا انٹینسٹی آف ساؤنڈ فرام دا لاؤڈ اسپیکر از ناؤ ہاف دا ویو لینتھ آف دا ساؤنڈ از ان چینج اسوم دا ایمپلیٹیوڈ آف دا ٹریس پروپورشنل ٹو ایمپلیٹیوڈ آف ساؤنڈ ویو اسکیچ دا نیو ٹریس آن دا سی آر او سو انٹینسٹی از ہاف ڈ اوکے سو یو کین نو یوز دا فارمولا آئی ون اوور آئی ٹو ایکولس ٹو اے ون اسکوائر اوور اے ٹو اسکوائر ایف یو لک ایٹ دا ایمپلیٹیوڈ رائٹ ناؤ it's basically somewhat 1 2 and 2.2 2.4 2.4 cm right now it is the amplitude so i'm going to put intensity initially let's suppose was i and i got to find i2 the amplitude was 2.4 square and i want to find the new amplitude okay because the new intensity was like half i that's what they're saying this will cancel out this will be a2 square equals to half times 2.4 square under root under root so then it's gonna be 0.5 times 2.4 whole square and i'm getting an amplitude of 1.7 centimeter So what you're going to do is you're going to make the same wave because the wavelength doesn't change. So that means on this diagram, which you're going to change the color, you find the amplitude where it's 1.7, so it's 1. It means 1.2. That's 1.2, 1.4, and 1.6 and 1.8. So 1.7 will be right here. Same goes downwards. just make the same distance like it was 1 to 3 boxes below somewhere here and same distance here and then just make a trace the wavelength should not change okay it should not change like that is that clear everyone any questions please let me know Please have a look. Perfect. Okay. So now we are going to go to the next you guys can hear me right yes sir okay so now this question it says the time based setting is this much which statement is correct so you look it's given 1 cm so that means that is also 1 cm which means the lambda in this is like 2 cm time based setting is given now they say if you look they are talking about frequency so we got to find the frequency again the same formula time period equals to time base times lambda or length So time base is 0.20 microseconds and the length is 2 so we get 0.40 microseconds this time period we can find the frequency 1 upon 0.40 times 10 to the minus 100000 okay
so 2500000 would mean that um, Twenty five hundred thousand. Now they've given in megahertz, all of them. So I'm going to convert into megahertz. So it's going to be two point five megahertz because there's six zeros, right? So one, two, three, four, five, six. So I can write it as two point five times ten raised to the six and mega. So it means these two are absolutely wrong because they are five. So it says that the frequency of wave and it lies in microwave region of this. Do you guys know the lambda of, uh, okay, sorry. So you got the frequency, which is here, but now we need to know where it lies, in the microwave or radio wave, okay? So again, you need to use V, uh, v is equal to F lambda to confirm that. The speed of light is this much. Fre <laughs> okay, fair enough. So then, The next one, you guys can do it on your cell. Like it's pretty easy. You just do find the frequency. You have everything else. And try this one as well. And obviously there's so many questions about this. Just try them and they're pretty easy. And now we're gonna move to electromagnetic spectrum. Now, so electromagnetic spectrum is sort of, you know, It's basically all waves in electromagnetic spectrum are transverse. First of all, you should know that. The second thing is that all waves can travel in vacuum. So they don't really need any particular medium to travel. And then all of them, all waves have 3.0 times 10 raised to 8 meters per second speed in air or vacuum that's about it okay now so first of all we're going to learn about uh, radio wave and unfortunately we also need to learn their um, wavelengths okay so you got to remember that so first of all the wavelength of a radio wave is between like minus 1 to 10 raised to 4 or longer it could be even longer the uses of radio waves are that they can be used in long distance communication they're also used in studies related to space so astronomy and study of space then they're also used in r r i radio r f radio frequency identification rfid okay so rfids are basically sort of trackers that we can use to locate certain things identification radio frequency identification that you guys need to remember anyway there are no dangers of radio waves so let's move ahead microwaves have 10 raised to a minus 3 to 10 raised to a minus 1 meters so all of them are in meters okay length the uses of microwaves are in cooking the other thing is that they can be used in satellite communication because unlike radio waves, they can basically uh, travel through atmosphere. So satellite television is a common thing and mobile phones are also operated like that. All right. So there are certain dangers about them as well. And one of those dangers are that they can write it here. 
they can basically cause internal heating of body cells you remember that okay then we got infrared infrared is like 10 raised to minus 6 to 10 raised to minus 2 infrared is used in electric grills remote controllers intruder alarms thermal imaging especially during the night they can see night vision and they are also used in optical fibers ok now the only danger of um, infrared is that they can cause burns because they're quite hot that's why okay please write this down and if somebody has a question please let me know okay now going to the next one so for visible light, visible light is basically used for obviously to see, uh, photography and it's also used for illumination because all other waves cannot be you know, seen and there is no particular dangers about um, is there light as well. Okay, perfect. Any questions? Anyone? Let me know, please. Alright, so then we're going to look at ultraviolet. Ultraviolet has some uses and some bad things about it as well. So, first of all, it is used in security markings because they can make like paint uh, invisible flame glow. That special fluorescent paint, okay? So security markings. They're also used in sterilization of water. They're used in tanning beds, if you want to look darker. They're also used in detection of fake currency because they basically can glow certain paints and we put those paints in the currency as well. The bad, parts about, the bad part about this is that it can causes damage to skin cells and that is why we use UV protection creams and then it can lead to eye condition as well especially snow blindness which is a very severe condition if you go in snowy areas and do not wear UV protection okay and that. please write it down and let me know if you have a question okay so now
Okay. Now let's go forward. I hope you guys have written. The sixth one is the x-rays. Uh, and obviously you need to remember the range. Like it's 10 raised to our minus 9 to 10 raised to minus 12. The good things about this is that it can be used in medical scanning. Like if a bone gets fractured stuff, you can see. And it's also used in security scanning. Like at the airport, they might use it to see what's in your bags. And then they can, because this is radioactive, so radioactive means that it can cause mutation and damage to body cells. So they're not very good if you are exposed to them for a very long period of time. It's not good. Anyway, for gamma rays, gamma rays is like 10 is to minus 10. 10 is to minus 16 or shorter like they're the shortest wavelengths amongst all of these they're used in like sterilization of food they're used in sterilizing medical equipment because if you have seen that they might say uh, some soap kills 99.9% .9 of the germs, but what about the 0.1% of them? They're killed by gamma rays, because gamma rays can kill all living things. Anyway, then they're also used in detection and treatment of cancer. Because this is also radioactive, That would mean that it can cause mutation as well and damage to body cells. So that's something you guys should remember. Okay. Let me know if you have a question here, please. Maham and Hamad, Aman, Ryan, Zahan, Umar. Patija, Laiba Swail. It's clear, sir. Okay. So, what you guys need to remember is that when you're going from radio to gamma, the frequency increases and wavelength reduces. Unfortunately, you need to remember the wavelengths that I've mentioned. And with that, you can always find frequency using V is equal to F lambda. Hmm? Now, so it says M and, N, M and N are two electromagnetic waves. The ratio of M and N is 10 raised to power 5. What could be N and M be? Because this is a positive number, that, that must mean that, yeah, it could be like this should be like m must have less frequency than n sorry less wavelength more wavelength than n how do i know this no it should be it should be like larger wavelength yeah, larger. larger wavelength, this should be a smaller wavelength. The reason is that obviously if the fraction is like positive, if the power of 10 is positive, that means that the bottom one has to be more negative in number, right? So now let's check the answer. So between microwaves and visible light, if you notice, uh, they do not have much of a difference because even if we take the average, like microwaves are 10 raised to our minus 2 and uh, visible light is 10 raised to our, it could be that, right? Minus 7, yeah, it could be visible light, that's good. Did I write uh, the wavelength of visible light? Oh, I did not write it, that's not fair. 
4 into 10 is to minus 7 to 7 into 10 is to minus 7 and for ultraviolet it's 10 is to minus 7 10 is to minus 9 usually we take it the middle value anyway so if you try this you're gonna get 10 is to minus 2 divided by 10 is to minus 7 so that should come out to be 10 is to 5 okay if you try this one because this is like this and gamma is 10 is to minus 14 so then the difference is much greater which means this is not the answer then gamma and obviously this won't be the answer because the value then will be negative visible light wave always negative so it has to be a then is it clear everyone any questions please okay so then let's go to this one so usually you just need to remember the the wavelengths directly and the range unfortunately there's no other way so we know that microwaves can lie between 10 is to power uh, minus 2 to i think they can also be minus 4 but not minus 4 i don't think so like it would be this one only and then infrared is correctly written and ultraviolet is correctly written and gamma rays is correctly written so x-rays is 10 is minus so this has to be the answer so sometimes you just need to remember because otherwise there is no particular way to you know uh, do these particular questions anyway moving on to dispersion of light so when white light passes a prism all colors spread okay so first two things that i would like to tell you number one colors disperse as soon as they enter prism now a lot of people draw it like this so they make a prism and what they do is they make it like this and then like this and then they start dispersing well that's not correct because it would disperse from the very point it has entered so you got to remember that okay now longer wavelength would mean less refraction so it will bend less which means red will bend the least violet will be most because it has shorter wavelength now unfortunately you also need to remember the wavelengths of these so for red like it's 700 nanometers for orange it is 625 for yellow it is 590 for green it is 500 for blue it is 480 and 450 and 400 like that so if you go down wavelength would decrease and the frequency is going to increase and one way to remember is this because before red there will be like infrared infra means less than red and after violet there is ultraviolet because these are all visible light spectrum right so ultra means higher than violet so you can have this clue to remember this now the idea of how you can basically remember is i would just say remember this value this value and this value and then you can obviously guess like the biggest one is 700 the smallest one is 400 and the center one is 500 so if i say orange so obviously you can make a value which is closer to red if i say yellow you can make a value which is closer to green and so on you can guess easily within the paper okay all right any questions please let me know all right now moving on you guys can write this down and then we'll move on. So then the last topic in this 
chapter is polarization and it is a newly added topic so and it's pretty easy in my opinion just have a look so polarization is basically a phenomena that phenomena that occurs when a wave is made to oscillate in one plane only plane means like x plane y plane z plane whatever all right the only thing that you guys need to remember is that polarization can only take place in transverse waves you cannot expect it to have in longitudinal waves just remember that anyway so when the unpolar is light which looks like this so it's basically going like in different directions is vibrating like this and we have put a polaroid now polaroid is basically a filter and now as you can see it has an opening right here which means it will only allow the vertical plane waves to go and it will cancel all these ones is it clear everyone so if it's going through a vertical polaroid it will become vertical if you go through a horizontal one it will become horizontal right so the evidence is this that when you basically rotate like you have right now you have zero degree difference between the vertical side and the horizontal side uh, and the polaroid so waves can directly travel like this like this and this but if you rotate it by 90 degrees now the polaroid becomes horizontal sorry this figure is a bit not correct you should make it like this okay just correct it like this this is not correct like it should be like this so that would mean that basically it will completely cancel all this because it cannot go through a 90 degree or horizontal plane then vertical cannot go through that okay maham do you understand this Zahan, Khatija, and the other Khatija, and Hamad, Aman, the uh, Laiva, so it. Okay. Okay. Very good. Now, so the thing is, then we need to know how do we create this particular Polaroid that can help us just make a wave into. A single plane so we can say it is made up of a transparent polymer material it has long chains of molecules all aligned in one particular direction so if they are aligned in horizontal direction they can basically uh, get through that and if they are horizontal then they can get through horizontal ones but what happens is that other waves there are block other the waves that are blocked transfer their energy as heat to these molecules so they just gain heat by vibration and that's it they would just uh, become hot all right any questions please let me know Now, this is which molecule that they produce 
Like the molecules like this. Do you understand? And also like this. So they will let the waves which are vertical in this case go. But if they're horizontal, they can't go. So they just end up heating up. Okay, like that. So I'm just gonna come back in like one second. You guys just uh, do your part. So next, so the uses. Okay, sorry, you can write it down. Okay, so then we have certain uses of polaroid as well, like for example, they're used in sunglasses and obviously the real sunglasses are polarized to them. So they absorb vibrations, put less strain on your eyes. That's why you feel cooler. Then we also used in cameras to take photos with less glare okay and then they can also be used in 3d movies because three three dimensional movies also use like two sides like if you if you ever noticed basically it's like uh, one side is a vertical polaroid the second one is a horizontal one so there are two basically movies running and your eyes think one is blocked by one glass and another is blocked by the other one and when you see it basically both eyes are looking at different movies that's why they create a depth effect which is not real obviously and if you remove the glasses you might see that the movie is kind of blurred it's not as good as you see in normal cinema so because there are two different you know movies running at the same time and they use those glasses as well right so all right i hope you guys understand that So now the thing is that not all the waves, like for example, if a wave is coming at a certain angle theta, suppose this wave is like coming here, as you can see, so obviously it has some angle theta with the Polaroid. So this dotted line that you see right here, it's called the transmission axis. Now Malice's law, which basically tells us how much intensity will be remaining after a certain while. So you guys need to remember Malice's law says when theta is like 90 degrees so to polarize light no light is transmitted we already know this because we've learned it previously and when theta is zero degree to transmission axis light can fully pass. So do remember that. Hello, Imal. Imal, this is not your class. 
Yes, at 9 p.m. for some time. Yes, see you then. Okay, so then what happens is that, for example, this is the transmission axis as you can see. So, you might realize that the intensity, initial intensity was I0, which is this one. And afterwards, basically when it cuts, only this much intensity is left. So if I make a vertical plane out of it, like this, uh, let me just draw another way. So this section makes a triangle. So this is 90 degrees, this is theta. This part is the amplitude, like we can say I, all right? So this is our amplitude A, the new one, and this was A naught, the original amplitude. So what we should understand is that this A would be, if A0 is the amplitude A, so this A, this amp would be A cosine of theta because this is next to the angle, so this is the base. And since we know that intensity I1 over I2 is A1 square over A2 square, so we can put it. Initially, the intensity was I0, the amplitude was A squared. Afterwards, the intensity became I, I wrote I0 here, sorry, it's just I. And the new amplitude would be A cos, cos theta whole squared like that. So, now we can, you know, uh, just simplify it. So a square cos square theta, a square and a square will cancel out. So we will get i equals to i naught cos square theta. Now you need to remember this formula because this is the malice law. I'm going to write it here as well. i equals to i naught cos square theta and this is the most important one. So in this one i is the transmitted intensity i naught is the incident intensity and this is i cos square theta and theta is the angle with respect to transmission axis remember that all right any questions please let me know here So keeping this uh, keeping this question like uh, formula in mind, we're going to look at some of the questions. But before, let's make this diagram. So according to Malice's law, I is equal to I naught cos square theta. So if you put zero in cos square, it is going to give you one, which means at zero degrees transmission, it is going to give you full intensity. At 90 degrees, it will be zero. At 180, it's going to be full again. 270, zero, 360, full again. So the wave would form like this. Like, it is just how intensity is changing with respect to uh, this. Now, you might also see that this is sort of a cos theta graph because it's a function of cos. So you guys need to remember that. Zero at 90 degrees and 270. And, z and maximum at 0, 180 and 360. So you guys need to remember that. Please let me know if you guys have any questions here. Okay. Right. So we're going to go to one of the questions and understand how it's done. So the moment you see this, you already know this is a malice law question and says by considering the ratio I0 
show you working so they by considering i of transmission i not calculate the ratio of this and this so we just need to do that right so uh, the same thing this is the derivation that we had to do it's just that <coughs> we need to find this uh, ratio wait by considering this calculate the ratio okay now we know that i is equal to i naught cos square theta and what you're going to do is you want to write i of transmission or i naught so this is the transmission transmitted one amplitude of transmitted whole square over amplitude of incident whole square like that now i t was equal to i naught cos square theta and i naught was i naught this was a t whole square this was a square now a naught square so this and this will cancel out you have 20 degrees to it which means we will write cos square 20 and then a t over a naught i can also write it as whole square then i'm going to take under root on this so i will get a t over a naught equals to cos of 20 degrees that's it because the square will cancel out so then keep keep in mind your, uh, your calculator must be in degree mode not radiant and your ratio will be 0 0.94 please let me know if you have a question here I'll, I'll basically make it easier for you so we are using two formulas right now we know that malice's law malice's law is i equals to i naught cos square theta and the other thing is we also know i1 over i2 equals to a1 square over a2 square can do you guys know this already right so i want to find this i this is transmitted light i not i don't know honestly so what i'm going to do is let's do it this way can i write it like this please would you mind right in here it will be i over i naught equals to a square over a naught square can i write it like this yeah. can i then put this value here yes, so it will be cos yes. square theta yes. equals to a square over a naught so we know we need a over a naught okay only so can i take under root on both sides then So if I take under root on both sides, will I get cos theta equals to a over a naught then? Yeah. Theta is like 20 degrees. So if I put it here, so a over a naught will be cos of 20, which is 0 0.9 that I put here. Get it now? Yes. Okay, so it says filter is now rotated about the direction of light beam from the starting position shown. So it's like rotated from the direction we have right now, 20 degrees. And says the rotation is such that the angle of transmission axis to the vertical, vertically a vertical initially increases calculate the minimum angle through which the filter must be rotated so that the intensity of the transmitted light returns to the value that it had when the filter was at starting point okay now this is sort of a tricky question the reason is you guys should understand that right now it is 20 the wave is like it it's 
it's basically transmitting a light right it's 20 degrees from the light so when will it show us the same thing when it is right here don't you think so yes so it would be like here then do you get it yes so they're basically asking us how much should we rotate can somebody please tell me now how much how much should we rotate Don't you think so? Like this should go. Do, should don't you think that it should be like this, like whole of this? that might be so we have to rotate it this way so the, the total rotation that I I have to do is like I have to come back to this point right this point let me just explain it again so I'm just making it till here this is our transmission axis we come back it will be 20 again so if you want to get the same result you need to move from like this axis from here till here you guys agree? Yeah. Okay. So then it would be like total rotation will be 180. So I could say 180 degrees 20 minus 20. What that might be? 140 degrees. 20 from this side, 20 from this side. Do you get it? So then it would be angle of 140 degrees, that's why this is just one mark. Because just you, you just need to see when it will be 20 again. So remember from the question here, to reach the same intensity again, you need to rotate by 180 degrees. Do you guys understand this? It will be already 20 and after that you also need to come to 20, then 20 minus 20 from 180 would be exactly 140 understood please have a look and let me know please okay very nice so we're gonna go to the next question and let me see which question should I give you I think you guys will be able to do the last question you will be able to do but we are going to go to this one. This is a tougher one. Okay. So in this question it says, state the meaning of polarization. So polarization means phenomena where an unpolarized light unpolarized waves sorry can be made to oscillate in one direction one plane only so you just need to write that state why light waves can be plane polarized but sound waves cannot because light waves are transverse and sound is longitudinal okay hence so longitudinal waves cannot be polarized is that clear everyone only transverse waves can be polarized so you should remember that do you guys understand this are you guys with me yes sir okay write this down please and then we're gonna go forward
Now, if you look at the the question, it says this is the transmission axis, and it is made to rotate from this to this angle. Okay. The transmission is vertical and transmission V is horizontal. Okay, this is horizontal, which is which means that it has rotated by 90 degrees actually. So then it says unpolarized light of single frequency is directed along x and y from a source position at x. The light emerging from filter A is vertically plane polarized. It says the light emerging is like vertical, and then it has intensity i naught as you can see now since the filter is rotated from its starting position about line x y after rotation the intensity of emerging filter is one quarter of i naught okay this was not 90 degrees sorry some theta one quarter so after emerging from b you have one quarter of i naught intensity left now it says calculate the angle do you guys know which formula should we use here Which formula has angle, please? Let me know. Okay, I equals to I naught cos square theta. I naught, I was equal to one quarter of I naught. I naught was I naught cos square of theta. We need to do this, okay? I naught and I naught gets cancelled out. So we are left with one by four equals to cos square theta. Then we're going to take under root. So we're going to get half equals to cos theta. Okay. Because quarter, uh, one quarter under root is half. So then just take co cosine inverse of 0 0.5. And that would be 60 degrees. Understood? Yes, please. Any questions now? Everybody understands this? Hmm. Now, yes. in the next set of questions, it says. It says the microwave intensity of I naught is yeah. It says the microwave intensity of I naught is sorta. Of Another microwave of same frequency and density traveling along opposite direction. Both microwave vertically plane polarized and superposed when they meet. We don't have any. Okay, this is something we gotta do again. So I'm gonna putting a star and we're gonna complete after we do stationary waves. But that's a very easy question. Those who know, uh, those who have already studied this, which is most of you have already done it. So I just like to tell you that this is basically the question because for stationary waves to be created, there must be same amplitude because amplitude is different. So it would not be able to create it, but that's uh, from the next chapter. So we're going to do that later. Anyway, then it did determine in terms of A0 the maximum amplitude of the wave formed. Okay. Okay. 
so it says intensity initial intensity was i not and amplitude was a not and then afterwards the intensity remained 1 by 4 and let's call this a we don't have the value for this one and we got to find when they have the maximum amplitude maximum amplitude is when they would meet like in phase to each other okay all right now so then let's do this this way i1 over i2 equals to a1 square over a2 square like that i1 was i not amplitude was a not square i2 was one quarter of i not and a2 was a2 whole square this is what we need to find okay this will cancel out and a2 will be equal to a quarter of a not whole square like that so the intensity of new wave is going to be when we take under root so it will be half of a not like this now if they meet constructively like one wave has a not the other one is half a not so the maximum one will be when they constructively meet when they add up so it's going to be a plus half 1.5 a not like that is it clear everyone yes sir i think there is one mistake that i did previously i just remembered from this that we had to subtract the angle i did not subtract the angle in the previous one this one okay we have to subtract the angle as well we got 60 degrees from the angle itself but the thing is that he is not talking about the angle that was uh, that made it to be 140 he wants us to find the rotation of this angle of rotation not the angle from this okay so angle of rotation would be that it's going to be the total angle that can be rotated is 90 degree so the angle of rotation is this one this one which is 60 this one so we going to subtract 90 degrees from 60 degrees and then it will be 30 degrees not uh, 60 so we have 60 degrees from the angle that at which this will be given but how much will it be rotated to get this angle that would be 90 minus 60 do you guys understand now just a small error here Please uh, correct this. All right. Explain why, sir. Yes, I'll explain to you. So what you need to understand is, uh, Atija, the angle. it says that the, the total angle that can be rotated is like 90 degrees do you understand this okay yes so at which angle will we get 1/4 that would be 60 whatever that angle was like 60 degrees from here right do you understand so the rotation 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 would be like sorry from that perspective we can say yeah transmission 60 so from that perspective when we move it the rotation about the horizontal is this angle now what is this angle 60 minus th- uh, 90 that is 30 degrees do you understand okay so that's why it's at angle of rotation so i was reading this and i thought oh i haven't you know subtracted this so there has to be this one from it says the calculate the angle of rotation of filter b from its starting position so starting position of filter b was uh, basically here right so how much angle we need to go back or some come back would be 30 degrees to reach 60 do you get it 
like that yeah so this was a tricky one here the next question is super easy i'd like to i like you guys to do it on your own this is the same malice's law nothing really biggie and uh, please submit your work by the end of this week i'm creating assignment as well i will see you again bye